And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Hello there, everybody. Greetings. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. Progressive Warriors Unite. Hold on, let me get my lucky black thorn shillelagh. Progressive Warriors Unite. And um, we're here. It's raining out. The weather's really crazy. It's insane. Climate change. It's we we get mild days. Uh, we get normal days. We get warm days, and we, then we, then it goes down to freezing again. And it's going to do that soon here in northeastern New Jersey. Isn't that true? Yeah. I think the night is going to be cold. I don't know. I don't know how to dress. I don't know when I should. You know, all I'm doing is opening and closing windows, putting the fan up, taking the fan down, uh, put the spring, put my spring uh, jacket on, put my vest on, put my winter coat on, back to the spring jacket, back to, it's crazy, man. Anyway, as you saw in the introduction, I'm James P. Madonna, and I'm here with, uh, <clears throat> my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. That was the correct year, right? Yep. Sunset, not Sunset Strip. That was an old show. Reverend, yep. Doc, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this week, sir? Uh, I need a nap. So do I with this rain man it, it's just like it's a perfect it's a gray day man. all you need day. is a wood-burning stove or a fireplace mm -hmm. and uh, some good food uh, some uh, high quality cheese whole wheat crackers <coughs> expensive salami yeah. or prosciutto uh, red wine and you will be out like a light Anyway, um, I want to say greetings to all my Facebook group administrators, every one of them, collectively. Um, and we got a, a whole bunch of them. I got Mick Von Raven, Sash Boyle, uh, Anthony Allura. Um, yeah. <clears throat> We've got a heap and helping of uh, really good administrators. Uh, 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 Mickey uh, Lethem, German lady from Florida, is our new uh, uh, food and drink group called Everything is Food. Uh, she's in charge of the craft beer and liquor section uh -huh. of the group. Uh, I, I congratulate and welcome... Uh, uh, Mickey Lethem as the new administrator of Everything is Food. Um, I want to say greetings to uh, organic farmer extraordinaire, uh, uh, fitness and nutritional consultant, Mr. Uh, uh, Stefan R. Santangelo. Greetings, Stefan. Um, He's been in, in the fitness industry for a long time. A lot of experience there. Um, let's see. And 
friend, my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Um, you know, I should really write down all my administrators. Bingo. <laughs> I got five groups over there. It's very difficult juggling them all and remembering everybody. Um, but uh, those are the primary ones, really. Uh, I, I like to give a shout out to uh, the state of Wisconsin. He's not an administrator, but he's a friend, and uh, he's an active participant on our uh, political Facebook group called Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth, Mr. Glenn Bean. Hello, Glenn Bean. And um, oh, damn. But... Uh, That's about it. That's about it. Uh, um, <clears throat> Paul Paul Neef, of course, is a very important, um, fantastic administrator on that political group. Greetings, Paul Neef. All right, now look, I don't have any Chisler's Hall of Shame products to bash. I think last week I did the uh, the food industry with that canned soup. That was last Saturday, right? I don't have anything to hammer uh, this week I'm sure some may come up later on there's always companies mm -hmm. to bash with uh, American capitalism always always it seems like underhandedness is the norm now being that the Republicans are in charge of the House and the Senate you know it's like what was what was dastardly in the past is now the norm today. You know, it's really sad. The amoral, the amorality of the American society. Hey, what's that? Uh, I'm not really totally familiar with all the details <clears throat> because I didn't bother to read the article because I try not to pay attention to ridiculous, stupid things. In, in, in this case, politics. But what's the deal with uh, that ridiculous statement that Hillary made about what is it? Uh, New York City criminals running guns, getting guns from Vermont. She made yeah. some ridiculous statement about guns in Vermont, connected to the New York primary. The only thing I know about that is that the uh, she. Uh, she was, she was on Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders doesn't want to uh, hold a gun company liable if somebody uses their gun and kills somebody. Well, would you hold uh, the Hankel's Cutlery uh, Company that makes kitchen knives responsible if no, somebody not. murdered their wife with a, with a chef's knife? Of course, of course not, not, but she's looking... She's looking for things to attack right now. She's uh, she's having difficulties, and uh, she needs to uh, Nip disqualify Bernie's. Hands. So she feels okay. that a whole truckload of nitpicks, of mm -hmm. nitpicky little little nonsense, might add up, might chip away at Bernie Sanders like a woodpecker on a tree. And uh, because she doesn't have anything substantial in her arsenal. Even uh, even uh, Bubba Boy, Bill Clinton, the, the other day, uh, somebody was nagging about the 19, 1994 crime bill that he signed. And then that's why we got all these people in prison. So he was trying to defend, I mean, uh, th that bill put away people for small things like marijuana and stuff like that, and blacks and Hispanics and etc. over whites. But he was defending it. You know, but that's why America today has more people in prison than any other country on the face of the planet. 
I believe it's 2.2 million people. Yeah, and and is it is it or is it or is it not true that most of these privatized prisons for profit happen to be in the south? Yeah, because they make money on the prisoner. You know, somebody got um, someone uh, a judge. He's going to prison. He's going to prison for 28 years. Because, because, uh -huh. because uh, uh, selling uh, 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 humans to a privatized prison is mm -hmm. called human trafficking, mm -hmm. which is a felony. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I'm glad to see that there are some judges that are not above the law. You wouldn't think they would find one, but <laughs> this one's going to prison. Um, and, um, you know, uh, of course this whole thing is like despicable, you know, human, the whole concept of human trafficking and, 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 and uh, uh, female children being kidnapped and, and sold to the, uh, mm -hmm. uh sex trafficking you know whether uh, pedophile sex trafficking and the yeah, whole yeah. but you know what there's a lot of your biggest perverts are not the left-wing progressive uh, progressives and hipsters oh no your biggest perverts are the elitists mm -hmm. and many of them are are right-wing I think all of them are right-wing you know all, all the all this the 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 cults they belong to and, and the and the perverted sexual practices that they they uh, uh, um, are involved in in secrecy. Those are your biggest perverts. Uh, the other day, I was I had the misfortune of hearing the uh, nails on the chalkboard, <laughs> which is Sarah Palin speaking, and she was challenging the concept of too big to fail of and, and too big to fail too big to jail too big for you know uh, uh, I guess she was referring to corporate uh, bailouts no, and she, she was, wasn't huh no she wasn't she was referring to the government no I was I was just gonna say mm -hmm. she was uh, bashing of course corporations can do no wrong That's correct. to a Republican she was bashing government That's government right. is the enemy big government right. and this is what a lot of libertarians do too they bash everything is the fault of government mm -hmm. uh, 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 your freedom the less freedom uh, uh, they feel that the more freedom a corporation has the uh, more successful it will be and then if for some stupid a pea brain reason they feel that it will trickle down and create jobs which it does not Mm -hmm. They're good at outsourcing your job, though. So well, they're so free today that they can hide tax money overseas and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Lie about their companies and their executives and all this stuff. Yeah. Hey, they got all the freedom. Yeah. Where's ours? I was I was talking to the pizza delivery man yesterday, and uh, he's he's all excited and and enthusiastic about Donald Trump. He likes oh. he likes his. What's coming out of his mouth? So I says, uh, "Oh, he's gonna get things done. That guy? You kidding me? We're gonna win, he's win, gonna, win, win. You're gonna get tired he's a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner. He, he, but he's the type of guy that gets things done. Well, I told him we were talking about taxes. I says, you know, uh, when they when they cut taxes." They're not talking about you, the middle class guy working two jobs. No, you have to make it up. You're being strangled. He says, yes, you're right. I am being strangled. Uh -huh. But don't blame. He don't like Bernie Sanders. Don't don't blame the uh, the the progressives or the Democrats for your tax burden. Blame Ronald Reagan over 30 years ago. You're paying taxes because the Republicans you're being strangled. When they, when the Republicans talk about tax cuts, they're talking about tax cuts for the rich. Somebody has to make it up. Oh, 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 he, he didn't really give me an answer. You know, when a person is under a spell, <laughs> like the pe the poor people living in shacks that vote Republican, uh -huh. 
are under a spell. That's that. The, uh, the carpet munching uh, uh, femi feminists, the feminazis that are in Hillary's, on Hillary's spell, under Hillary's spell. They have, these people seem to have blinders on, like a Clydesdale. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They cannot analyze a subject, think independently, critically on their own, analyze the subject and see, weigh out the pros and cons and see the truth of it All and right. make a decision based on that. Mm -hmm. They, once they're, they're sold, this guy is just seems to be sold on Donald Trump's personality. Like the people who re-elected Chris Christie. You know, they loved his his spunk, you know, and oh, he speaks his mind, he's outspoken. Rah. So they, automatically they're under their spell. The hype. They're caught up by the hype. Indeed. You know, like uh, like my friend uh, Iron Man Vinny Blake says, I, I, I buy I have to I have to eat Quaker oatmeal. Like a why, Vinny? There are many, many, many store brands that are exactly the same. It says old fashioned roll those. He says, Well I like that man's face. I trust his face. That old guy on the box. Mr. Quaker. He's not even real. <laughs> like uh or the pizza, was it Mama Celeste? Or uh the KFC. Hey, was the Uncle Kainal. was Uncle B the Coinal. The Coinal. Coinal Sanders. Is Uncle Ben's Rice? Is that guy real? No, none of them are. <laughs> Betty, Betty Crocker, none of that's crap. Beatrice Foods, nothing. So they, they it's get. It's a nice name that they know oh, during, God. because of advertising, <laughs> tests, and etc., they know that people respond to it. That's all. You know, uh, 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 you know like. Uh, Quaker guy. But yeah, like they put a face that makes people mm -hmm. feel good and fuzzy all over yeah. and comfortable. And um, it's like a politician, <clears throat> I guess it's like a politician, um, you know, when G.W. Bush went to the 9-11 uh, site, he was very casually dressed with like with a with I'm a, one of you. A jacket. We gotta get them dog people who knock those buildings down. Yes. Justice. You know, something like that. So, you know. You never got him. He, you know, by being casual. Obama got him. You know, or or by wearing a big bow tie like Orville Redenbacher, you get a lot of uh, a common folk liking you. They're sucked in. Bamboozled. Bamboo. Anyway, speaking of Sarah Palin, a little imitation. When the loony, when the cuckoo bird talks, that's pretty much what I hear. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings because we're way behind schedule. Everything we speak about politically is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. Feel that conch energy, can you dig it? And most importantly, I want to introduce the Bernie bird. You see that blue bird up uh, above Mr. Anonymous here? Blue bird. You see that blue bird up there? I hope you can see him. Yeah, uh, I can see him. That's our Bernie bird. Bernie Sanders. Remember, the Bernie bird is the word. Just in time before the racket interrupts me. All right, go ahead. A bull. That escaped from a slaughterhouse. A bull. Holding area and ran through Queens, New York, has been captured. Too bad it didn't run down um, past the Merrill Lynch uh, <laughs> main office, right? Of that commercial. And taken to greener pastures by John Stewart. He was rescued. He was rescued and uh, uh, to spend the rest of his life alive and unslaughtered, in other words. Officials tell the New York Times that the black and white Angus was spotted Friday. The bull was corralled at York College. 
where students snapped the pictures and took videos. How do you calm down a bull on a rampage? That's what I like to know. The bull was later taken to an animal shelter by the former Daily Show comedian and his wife. That's nice of them. Who are animal advocates. Yeah. Stewart has a 45-acre animal sanctuary in oh. Monmouth County. Monmouth County, New Jersey. New Jersey. Down, down, uh, going towards the Jersey Shore. That's that's very nice of them. I I, I know um, the horror movie uh, actress Linda Blair is very much involved with animal rights and animal rescuing. You know, you, you, it's good to see people of celebrity status that have a heart. You know, like that. Um, what the hell is his name? I don't want to get. I don't want to name the wrong actor, but uh, uh, African American, very very famous actor, uh, purchased um, uh, many many acres of land as a bee sanctuary, uh -huh. so the bees can do their thing without Monsanto's Roundup to kill them. Nice. Right, but then again, Monsanto's Roundup is pretty much banned, I think, in uh, in Europe. And, uh, yeah, so the bees are, are safe over there. We're eating it. We're yeah, eating it yeah, here. Yeah, Roundup is killing us, yes, yeah. and chemtrails and yeah. and everything, all the other toxins. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 even, even, even drinking, bottled drinking water is spiked. Ugh. Seriously. You know, well, hey, they want to depopulate the... the all the po folk in the lower middle class, you know. Anyway, continue. Mississippi governors signed a law on Tuesday that allows religious groups and some private businesses to refuse service to gay couples. That's true. Based on religious beliefs. It's funny how they call that religious freedom. So it's their freedom to discriminate and force their views on other people. That's basically what it is. Well, they, they, if you read uh, the the uh, 13th uh, part of How to Defeat a Conservative in the new newsletter, which is out right now, you will see that when the Puritans, when the Pilgrims, and all the other, uh, except the poor Quakers and the Friends. Yeah, the Mennonites stood up here. They all persecuted each other. And whoever got the power persecuted the other. So they left the old world. They left Europe to flee. Because of perfect persecution. To flee. Yeah. I, let me do my dramatic thing with the shillelagh. To flee persecution. Uh -huh. To come to the new world world for a a, a, a much better life, happier life, yeah. and it ended up that they persecuted just like the persecutors that caused them to leave Europe. Correct. They started be becoming like the persecutors. Correct. So maybe we have a human nature problem. Yeah, a power problem. Whoever gets on top. Always going to step on somebody on the park. Okay? Governor Phil Bryant signed House Bill 1523 despite opposition from gay rights groups and some businesses who say it enables discrimination. Some conservative and religious groups support the bill. The measure's stated intention is to protect those who believe that marriage should be between one man and one woman, that sexual relations should only take place inside such marriages, and that male and female genders are unchanged. Why can't uh, gay and lesbian couples uh, just have a civil ceremony in, in that state, Mississippi? Why can't they just get, you know, why it doesn't have to be clergy 
why can't these governors keep the goddamn mouth shut? You know what? Why make the poor persecuted group do something else? You know, I got an idea. If all, if any religion, if any organized religion, church, what have you, be it evangelical, it doesn't matter who they are. If they want to stick their nose into politics, tax them like everybody else. Pay taxes. We don't do that. We but, allow them non but then, but then, but isn't is it? 5013C or something. Isn't it against the Constitution yes. to, to mix church and state? Yes, but they don't believe that. Well, what? So they want to make they they want to override the 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 supreme law, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They did it in the in the Second Amendment. Then how do you hold how do you hold people accountable? Uh you can't. Why not? Because they are having the power now. You mean the we're nuts? Back, we're back to the pilgrims and the puritans and the separate. The kooks. So, the so kooks it's have the power down there. So it's like it's down like south. it's like the wild wild west with the kangaroo court. There you go. Up, oh, up. Oh, you don't need an attorney. You're you're guilty. You're guilty. We're gonna. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. You know how it used to be down in the south with the Jim Crow laws and etc. Uh, and the blacks. And, hey, you lynched them all the time. So, so they didn't have to go to court. So if the blacks down south at that time would say, "Hey, our forefathers said all men are created equal," they yeah. didn't. They didn't say white, black, or or Asian or anything. The, 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 the southern is the boss hog. Was it? Ah, you shut up! I don't care what you have to say. You're automatically guilty. You so and so. You. Well, you see what uh, Martin. It wouldn't Luther, have done any good. You see what Martin Luther King had to do. Yeah. You know. And Bernie Sanders march with them, while Hillary Clinton campaigned for Barry Goldwater. This bill merely reinforces the rights which currently exist to the exercise of religious freedom, as stated in the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The Republican governor wrote. That's right. On his Twitter account. That's right. What are you saying that's right? No, I mean, I mean, that's it's, wrong. That's right. That no, that you're calling them out. That's oh. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that's wrong. I'm sorry. The measure allows churches, religious charities, and privately held businesses to decline services to people whose lifestyles violate their religious beliefs. Individual government employees may also opt out. Yeah, but the evangelicals could, could violate your religious beliefs. Well, that's what they're doing, aren't they? See, if, 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 if you could sum up uh, conservatives with one word, it would be hypocrisy. Ah, indeed. Although the measure says governments must still provide services, this bill does not limit any constitutionally protected rights or actions of any citizen of this state under federal or state laws. It does not attempt to challenge federal laws, even those which are in conflict with the Mississippi Constitution as the legislation of federal law in such limited circumstances. Other states have considered similar legislation. North Carolina enacted a law while governors in Georgia and South Dakota vetoed proposals. Mother dated a guy named Vito a long time ago. I'm sorry, he spelled it from Guru. No, he, he he used to go hunting and he used to bring me uh, uh, venison uh, supersada and venison salami and you know, it's pretty freaking good. I'll tell you that much. Oh, for lunch today I'm going to have over here uh, Genoa salami and provolone sandwich. I'm 
12 grain bread with horseradish mustard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. The article quotes people who have been left behind in corporate downsizing or outsourcing as saying they are not sure there's any job security anymore. They're Amen right. to that. There is none. There hasn't been for quite some time now. There are none, rather. There was a time not long ago when that loyalty did exist. There was a covenant between employer and employee. It was not outrageous to think that someone could start a career and retire with the same company. Yeah, that's what my uncle uh, Phil used to tell me when I was a teenager. You get hooked up with one big blue chip company, you work hard for them, dedicate yourself, they'll take care of you. But, you know, you're talking about the 1950s way of thinking. Yeah, you're talking about a time before they learned about shareholders must get all the benefits. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like uh, you know, uh, like Bill Morrow has the same way of thinking too. He's thinking yesteryear when it comes to corporations, where where oh, yeah. CEOs cared about their their customers and their company was came first and the shareholders just had to wait for their profits yeah now everything is shareholder 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 shareholders every three months every three months that's how corporations think today there's no long term there's no uh, investment uh, okay we're gonna we're gonna make profits down the road no 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 you make profits that first quarter or you're finished. So in other words, you think these uh, these rich, uh, spoiled, greedy, coddled, uh, scumbag shareholders threaten them constantly that they're going to sell their shares? In other words, make me money or I'm going to sell my shares? No, it didn't begin with them. It began with Milton Friedman and Lewis Powell back in the 70s. The scumbags. Yeah. They discovered that all benefits should go up and not down and not sideways up only in other words they uh they untrickled the trickle down economics a corporation's only obligation is to make money for its shareholders period right so Milton not Fried make a good product not have uh, good right. r r relations with their employees, etc. So this guy only who, to make money the, for the shareholders. This guy, according to his this this man, according to his name, Milton Friedman, this was, man was Zionist, was an economist at the Chicago School. But he was he was a greedy son of a bitch. He was like Ayn Rand. Yeah, he's a male. They bird. shared the same yeah. uh, par uh, uh, characterology. I'm sure he uh, got a glimpse of Ayn Rand's books. Milton Friedman. He so was he's probably a an acolyte. He's a male, male version of, yeah, or disciple of. Just like Mr. Ayn Greenspan. Rand. Another Zionist piece of shit. Yeah, Alan Greenspan, the guy who had a, a, a ridiculous jack o' lantern grin or grimace on his face while. Senator Bernie Sanders told him off. Was reading him the riot act. We're reading him the riot act, yeah. and what and what a riot act it was. And it's on YouTube, by the way. You know, uh, you know what else impressed me? The speech made by Charlie Chaplin. Remember that progressive yes, speech? Yes, the one about the uh, yeah. where he was dressed up like Hitler <laughs> with a brown shirt. Yeah, but he was uh, the mustachio. But there were topics that still apply to today. Universal theme. Yeah, there were. It wasn't. It wasn't strictly about World War Two. That's correct. It was the shit got hitting the fan in general. Getting the gold watch, along with a comfortable pension, was a realistic expectation. There was even the idea of a corporate conscience that a corporation existed for a higher purpose than just making money. 
Then came the corporate raiders of the 1980s, who would buy up undervalued companies, saddle them with debt, break the companies up, and sell the pieces for personal gain. And who did that? Who did that for a living? Mr. Mitt Romney with Bain Capital. That's what they did. Yeah, didn't, didn't he also say he enjoyed firing people? Yes, he did. Yeah, and then they, and then they caught him on uh, he also audio, said audio recording. Corporations are people, my friend. Oh, because of that... Uh, that law that ain't a law. The, the law that, that technically is not a law, yeah. Yeah. Which the, co which the Supreme Court followed as a precedent. Well, it is no precedent. Well, to, it doesn't exist. Well, to conservatives, they followed it, followed it as a precedent because it sounded good to them. But it wasn't a law. You see how they... You see how they represent a lawless society because it, it, the laws only apply to the little guys, but not the fat cats, not to them. Suddenly, all the rules of the game changed. Yeah. A corporate conscience became an unaffordable frivol frivolity. <clears throat> In this exchange, the nature of the employer-employee relationship was forever changed. Workers were no longer assets, they were costs. Costs that were to be eliminated or reduced at Ta every opportunity. Yeah, they're tax deductible too. Well, if they were tax deductible, they wouldn't be costs. Now you told me uh, later... Yes, I told you that, but you just changed everything. They are tax deductible. They are not costs. No. It is a perception coming from they the corporation are. that they are costs. No, they, they are tax deductible. Yes, that's They what are I a write-off. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Get the wax out of your ears. That's what I said. No, they're, you didn't say that. They're tax deductible. I said they're tax deductible. You agreed they were a cost. They are not a cost. Well, the cost of 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 doing of running a business collectively is all tax deductible. Is that true? Most things, you know, wages, like, like if pensions, right? What a, health insurance. Like if they have leased cars, stuff car, like that. If the, cars, if the executives have leased cars, including the gasoline that goes in them, two right? martini lunches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Downsizing began. Positions were eliminated and never replaced. This pure, carnivorous version of capitalism has been allowed to grow on check for years. Yeah, gluttonously carnivorous. Well, there it is right there. Like like a bunch of capitalism in a conch shell. Like a bunch of crocodiles feasting on a on a on, on a wildebeest or a gnu. Along with the decline of unions, it has now led us to a place where those who are not at the top of the food chain have little hope of controlling their financial destiny. Until a shift in our culture occurs that forces companies to value workers more than profits, the American dream will continue to fade from reach. The American dream was always rigged for the people on top to experience, top 20 percent. I mean, I mean, you, very, very few uh, regular uh, Joe, Joe Blow, six, Joe Six Packs in society ever had upward mobility. Not that many. Go to any store, pick up a few items. What you will see is made in China, made in Singapore, or made in any other countries. Yeah, even even the inside of a, Don, uh, a Donald Trump campaign hat <laughs> says made in China. It doesn't take much of a brain 
to realize that foreigners have jobs at our expense, while our citizens are unemployed. Yeah, at, 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 at uh, a fraction of what it costs to pay an American there. They're being exploited, basically. You know. With free trade, alleged experts have said we are going from a manufacturing economy to a service economy. But they forget that if we have many unemployed Americans, we will not be able to pay for those services. Nowhere is this worse than in the electronics industry. This is why you need to tariff those products when they come back to the United States. Since but you can't because you just signed a trade agreement with these countries to do it this way. But and that's what they wanted yeah, to do but with the TPP, didn't they? What I'm saying, since manufacturing jobs will most likely not return back to the United States. You have to make up for it somehow. Don't make the stupid trade agreements. Well, you can thank your, your right wing for that. Jeez. And your blue dog corporatist Democrats. Thank you. Which I call Democrats. Thank you. No, oh, excuse me. Unfortunately, free trade is not fair trade. Nope. And only Donald Trump understands this or is taking talking about it. <laughs> Many of the incompetent, clueless politicians in Washington are lawyers and have never in their lives run a business. Oh, God. Only Donald Trump talks about it? Only Donald Trump? See this bluebird up here? There's another candidate that talks about it all, too. And then some of them. They don't even understand why this is happening, much less have any solutions. <sighs> Trump clearly outlines the trade deficits with China and Japan, while Hillary Clinton is saying that she is fighting for us with no solutions <laughs> on She's fighting for us. I, I saw the most... That's what her signs say now. I it's saw the most her. nauseating Hillary Clinton campaign commercial yesterday where she's hugging, she's embracing, and she's cheek to cheek hugging black people. Oh, yeah. What the hell is she going to do for minorities and the poor? I mean, when you look oh, at what... Her husband put them in jail. When you, when you look at what she's about... Took them off welfare. Put them to work. In, in a privatized prison. There you go. That's what it was all about. She wants Hillary. Nixon. Hillary doesn't like fifteen dollars an hour. She wants twelve dollars an hour. Mm. She wants uh, students to continue to pay off their student loans. Yeah. She doesn't want free uh, education, yeah. uh, university education. She doesn't want uh, the free single payer universal no. health care. She sounds very much like a Republican. Yeah. Well, what the hell do you think they, they, the uh, 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 Bill Clinton became? The Clinton uh, era. Yeah. They, 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 Republicans, that's why he worked yeah. with Newt Gingrich. Well, the blue he dog, the, past. the blue dog is starting to turn uh, shades of red. Please help us, un help, oh, excuse me, please help us before this country goes completely down the drain and the middle class disappears. It's almost there. That's what happens when you have a corporate oligarch when, when the right wing is in charge. The middle class vanishes. I was just going to say Bill, no, Bill Clinton's nose is getting redder and redder which probably signifies them, uh, the Clintons, politically. How can the so-called American dream be sustained if <laughs> jobs that produce durable goods keep disappearing? This, this, this individual seems to think that the little guy is exper <laughs> can experience the American dream. The entire American workforce cannot work in service-type jobs. 
Production companies and the jobs they provide help create the need for service type jobs. Not everybody can work on Wall Street or sell real estate. The balance of good manufacturing jobs versus service sector jobs has tipped dangerously in the wrong direction. Our colleges and universities are overflowing with students, many of whom would be better suited and much happier to work in construction or manufacturing. But good jobs in those sectors are hard to find, so they turn to further education. This country needs to bring back jobs that build cars and washing machines and companies that produce steel. The factors that drive these types of companies out of the country need to be re-examined. The global economy seems to have drained America of the opportunities that were once so abundant. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe in the 1950s under Eisenhower, uh -huh. when the tax rate on the rich was 91 percent was where it should be. Oh yeah, the, pi the pizza. And they're bitching about Bernie might 50 percent. Oh wow! Ooh. Ooh. Hey, the, the pizza delivery guy was saying, "Oh, I won't be able to survive if they hit me with a 90 percent tax rate." I guess I said they're not. They're not you. supposed to hit the middle class with the 90% tax rate. It's for the rich. We have a progressive tax system. They the more money you make, the higher your taxes. It has nothing to do with the little guy, the, the middle the, class. The, your average mainstream American does not, they don't have any idea how this country is. Works. How it works, how it's run, how government works. And they're clueless. Exactly. All they all they know is they respond to what they see on TV, the hype. If if you blame somebody, and that Trump is the only one talking about these things. If you sound excited and Ooh. you point your finger at other people, then you get excited and then you believe them. You get you know. In other words, the hype is like a sponge. It absorbs you all these. You see how they respond to these religious nuts, don't you? When the, they're up there preaching. The poor 15-year-old girl who's not even old enough to vote gets pepper maced in the face. And and, 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 it, and she's called uh, a, a nigger lover. Ooh. Uh, by the uh, Donald Trump supporters. supporters. It was at a Donald Trump rally in the South. And she's pepper maced. She's 15 years old. She can't vote anyway. It's like they're, they're nuts. They're bonkers. I'm telling you. You know. Anyway, we're going to break for lunch, and uh, we'll be joined by our uh, voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrill III, and then we'll return. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. 
the newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. All right. We're back. Back from lunch. Thank you very much. Ah, ah you a smart cookie, man. You slick. You slick. Oh, slick Willie. <laughs> slick Billary Clinton, the uh, the man with the roaming eyeballs. And the bulbous nose. And the bulbous nose, the roaming eye. Mm. They call it the, the the playboy, the man with the roaming eyes. I wonder if he's getting any now. Please, I just say. I don't... I, I don't <laughs> him and Hillary, I don't want to think about it. Okay. Uh, just wonder. Well, Wasserman Schultz can always use her her hawk nose as a dildo up up Hillary's ass, which it basically is up Hillary's ass. I think that sounded very funny. I'm going to ring my levity bells. Oh shit! I think Steve just took a flight. You don't mm. like you don't like the levity bells. Um, <coughs> okay, what was I going to say? I want to salute. <coughs> I want to salute the progressive Pope Francis for inviting Bernie Sanders for four days at the Vatican. They say he forced that. Somebody's saying it. Somebody said that Bernie forced that, it. That Bernie suggested it? Forced it. Not suggested it. I wonder who. I, I wonder what the source was that said that. I don't know. You got to be careful with this uh, desperate uh, corporate oligarch. There's a lot of misinformation out there. No kidding. You know, but uh, nevertheless, I want to salute Pope Francis. I think it's uh, very important that they met for four days. Oh, now you want to go out. All because of the levity bells. Woke up Steve, the black and white cat. Go ahead, Steve. Anybody else? Nope. <coughs> well, I don't care. <coughs> I don't care. You know what I mean? All right. I also want to say. Why in the hell did Bernie Sanders have to go? And speak and, and get interviewed in one of those Christian universities talking about uh, 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 abortion, abortion, <coughs> and, well, and, and being questioned about abortion. Of course, they have to bring that up. Why did he have to do that? Because it's it, it, it's it's a no-win debate because these people are nuts. The interviewer, you can tell. Yeah, was an evangel he was an evangelical nut the way he looked the way he spoke they have a disagreement that's how the debate is is a disagreement mm -hmm. but, but why why put yourself in a situation where you allow right wingers to interview you with lots of students in the audience you know and uh, uh in public, you know, well, and, and make it public. He handled it well. <coughs> he handled it well. I mean, that's, that's a disagreement. They Bernie is for the woman, is, is right to choose right. what the hell she wants to do with her body. And the religious nuts are, uh, you know, well, he uh, did, he, life begins at uh, when the spermatozoon uh, pokes its head into the ovum. 
Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's not what the Bible says. Let me tell you something, brother. A fertilized human egg is no different than a fertilized chicken egg. It is not a human being, and that goes the same for an embryo that breeds like a fish. The Bible says life begins with the first breath, as in with Adam. That's it. That's that's it. Period. That's and what God the Bible breathed says. Breathed into the nostrils of right. Adam. So there is no scientific proof that the uh, the the process of uh, conception is a human baby uh, when a f um, well it's not that it's the life begins at yeah begin now no one knows what life is in the first place okay right. no one has ever described what life is it's as it's some form of energy energetic, uh, you know, quality or whatever, but no one has uh, come up with that. Uh, does the spermatozoon have it? Does the ovum have it? You know? Does the banana have it? And when the, 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 the two cells divide into four, is that a human being? Of course not. I read a, a large, long scientific article about that subject, and scientists have proved that <laughs> it's not a human life, and not at that point. Not at that point, of course. Um, it's all potential. Potential. A, a sprouted acorn, an acorn or a sprouted acorn, is a potential oak tree. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Now, um, it won't be a elm tree. We know that much. It's a potential oak. It will oak. be a oak tree. Potential oak. Potential oak. Yeah. It now, will be of its kind. Yeah. We know that. Now, now what's funny is how Republicans um, deal with the subject. Like uh, Chris Christie, uh, during one of the last Republican debates, stated that the first thing he would do is uh, defund Planned Parenthood to save the lives of all those those murdered babies in the womb, blah, blah, blah. No, no, it isn't about the, the babies that the Republicans really care about. It's about defunding a, a federally subsidized or a, a state subsidized program. It's the pilgrims and the Puritans all over. They again. don't want to. They, they they don't want to. They want to persecute those that don't have their power. No, but they also want to defund uh, 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 government programs. Period. Period. Not the ones giving subsidies to the Koch brothers and Mobile Exxon, oh, Mobile, cor cor etc. Corporate welfare is fine yeah. with Republicans. Yes. And warfare. Oh, the military budget. Every republic was screaming and yelling, Our military is depleted! Oh, we don't have enough ships! We're weak. We're, we're, we're weak! O o Obama has made the United States weak. weak! Yeah. Is what they said. Yet we spend more than any, like, eight, eight or ten countries together on the military. What about that, um, that uh, aircraft fiasco, the, tr uh, the, the, I don't know, Astronomical F thirty five, uh, astronomical amount of money wasted on it. Yeah, wasted on that alone. Can you imagine what what that would have done for the for the for the poor and the homeless and the veterans, homeless veterans in the United States? Yeah, there wouldn't be an issue about cutting food stamps. Oh, but that they want to cut. Yes, absolutely. That they, you know that which makes up. One to one to two percent of the total budget, they want to cut. Yeah. I mean, social services collectively. Paul Ryan, he's there all the time. He's got it in his budget all the time. And Paul Ryan, I need the shillelagh for it. Paul Ryan, 
Social Security is bought and paid for by we the people and it is not an entitlement. You got that? Yeah. Alright. Thank you. Alright. Let us continue <clears throat> with the balance of this show. Okay, a little change of pace here. Okay. Toma tomato paste. A little change of tomato paste. Is it appropriate for a parent to sleep in their 13 year old's bed alongside that child for the entire night. It depends if is it the mother with the daughter, then it's fine. This child just entered puberty and I feel this is wrong. What do you think? If it's a if it's a mixed gender, if it's a if it's a mother with son, it's, it's definitely wrong. It is not, this is Amy Dickinson's answer. It is not appropriate for parents to co-sleep with adolescent children. <laughs> Partly because adolescents need and deserve some privacy. Well, as they engage in their developmentally important process of figuring out who they are and what they are about. Well, plus boys at that age are always getting erections. It's very hard to do this if the child is on some level answering the needs of the parent. <clears throat> a parent who co-sleeps with a child at this age when it isn't necessary for health and safety reasons is seeing to his or her own needs, not the child. It is supremely selfish and could lead to major problems. Not only the most obvious, which is the opportunity for sexual exploitation. Can very, very well happen. As well as the possibility of being accused of sexual exploitation. Yeah, why put yourself in a position for accusation, sure. But also the suppression of the child's own emotional, physical, and sexual development. Let me tell you, my grandfather used to say, uh, uh, kiss, kissing leads to hugging leads to fucking. Or it could be hugging, kissing. Hugging and kissing leads to copulation, eventually. What about these young ladies who don't want to kiss? That's like a whore. Usually, they 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 just have sex, yeah, without yeah. kissing. It's like a prostitute. We move on to the uh, you know main event or a little lead up, maybe yeah. with. Uh, and then they complain that men do not uh, uh, apply enough foreplay and do not mm, warm no. them up yeah. properly, and they're not romantic. And they just go right. Th they blame men for going directly to the main event. So these girls are doing what guys do. They're 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 turning the the tables. Uh, hey, you see women with manly tattoos, you know, hey. on the side of their arms, you know, these uh, black uh, demonic looking, you know, these dark demonic looking uh, uh, tattoos. Uh, on the side, and then they're driving SUVs like a guy, mm -hmm. you know, recklessly driving a big SUV. Either it's a carpet muncher or it's, I don't know what. You can complain feminism for all this. New Jersey could make history by launching a new bold experiment. The transition from a social welfare state to a social investment state. Social, yeah, that means uh, all the poor are going to be out in the street. During the last decade, government pay for success projects using social impact bonds had been begun to transform the public sector, including education, corrections, and social services. However, New Jersey has remained on the sidelines of innovation, relying on old mechanisms that are out of political favor 
and are inadequate to address the state's wide variety of social welfare needs. The social impact bonds serve as an alternative to government funding by attracting investors to finance initiatives that deliver predetermined measurable outcomes which are assessed by an independent evaluator. <laughs> Denial. If the objectives are met, <sighs> investors recoup their capital plus a government assured bonus. If promised outcomes are not achieved, investors are paid nothing. So structured the SIBs offer an innovative way to capitalize social programs while introducing a degree of accountability. In the past decade, the SIBs have evolved to finance a number of projects. Massachusetts authorized an SIB to address homelessness. Illinois launched an initiative to divert juveniles from detention. Funded by Goldman Sachs, oh, gosh. a Utah SIB provided services to developmentally delayed preschoolers who might have been diverted to costly special education. Initial results indicated that only one of 595 children was referred to special education. Accompanying the expansion of SIBs, intermediaries, have evolved to finance projects. In addition to venerable organizations, venerable organizations like Goldman Sachs. Sounds like they want to kick the poor to the curb to me. And the Rockefeller Foundation. New capital networks have emerged including social finance and third sector capital partners. Technical assistance has also improved. Harvard's SIB lab consults on several projects. Like any social innovation, the SIB learning curve improves as stockholders acquire more knowledge and experience, putting private capital to public purpose. Sounds like the capitalist uh, uh, answer to uh, social programs, is that? Well, yeah, they want somebody to make a profit on it. Yeah, the capital it's just like privatization. Yeah. Pri yeah. In other words, privatizing welfare. Give it over to one of your cronies. They want to privatize welfare with crony capitalism, more or less. Well, they want to make a profit on it, that's for sure. Everything's a private profit. they got to make a private profit on everything which means uh, the little guy will end up losing again. Right, because they, the, the money will not go into the government. Right, which means the poor will be kicked to the so curb. theoretically the government will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the poor will get, uh, uh, will become more, will starve more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. New Jersey provides an ideal environment for the SIBs. Really? The state's economy, once ranked among the top five, has stalled, prompting new thinking about funding social programs. Between 2010 and 2013, the state's growth in GDP was only 1%, half the national rate. I got an answer, tax the rich. Mr. Governor Christie did not allow that. No, because those he are his... He gave them a holiday. Those are his cronies. Okay. His pals. He, uh, he's, a, he always, he's afraid that businesses might leave the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. As he would say. Yeah, right. The great reason... Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. The Great Recession contributed to an upsurge in poverty 
from 2004 to 2014, New Jersey's poverty rate jumped 41 percent. All the moochers. Oh my goodness. Oh, them dog moochers. Oh, you uh, get a job. Go home and get a job. Get that protester out of here. Get him out of here. I'll punch him in the face. Uh, you know. Uh, as public assistance benefits lag behind oh, family man. needs, the number of children living in extreme poverty below half the federal level increased from 131,000 in 2010 to 139,000 in 2014. Despite rising poverty, the conventional approach, relying on federal funding, is unlikely to address the gap between family needs and public resources. Since the 2010 midterm election, congressional Republicans have checked federal spending. Indeed, under the Obama presidency, federal appropriations have grown only 1.6%, the lowest since the Eisenhower administration. Clearly, Washington will not fund social programs as it has done in the past. In light of these developments, it is unfortunate that New Jersey has faltered in deploying the SIB. The Social Innovation Act, which passed in 2014, would have provided $15 million in loans through the New Jersey Economic Development Authority to pilot SIBs. But it was vetoed by Governor Christie. Did you catch that, that, that name the Republicans gave it? Social uh, Innovation Act? Innovative? Let's say that again. Social Innovation Act. The Social Innovation Act. They always put, they always give these schemes a positive sounding title. Like the Clean Well, it must have been a positive act because Christie vetoed it. He, I, I didn't like it to begin with, but Christie, did, Christie, so Chris Christie, in reality, wants nothing. If he, look, if that, if this is a, if the Social uh, Innovation Act uh, is a, uh, a capitalist way approach, to social programs, welfare, and taking care of the poor, it can't be all that effective. If, the, if it's if it's, pri it's pri if it's privatized for profit, a uh, form of social program. Now, for Chris Christie to veto that, that means Chris Christie wants to offer the poor nothing, nothing, zero. In an age of austerity, nice guy, isn't he? That you reelected in New Jersey. The financing of social programs predicted on out, I mean, predicated on outcomes that are positive as well as cost-effective is simply good governance. Oh, really? To be certain, SIDs upset partisan conventions abusing liberal Democrats of their dependence on public funding for social programs and conservative Republicans on their denial about the effects of object, abject poverty. The benefits of SIBs are becoming undeniable. A full complement of SIBs could well mark New Jersey as a state that confronted with a rising need and static resources embrace the future 
of innovation in social policy. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, there's no jobs out there to make this all work, to make it work effectively. There's, there are no logical options for the poor. What are they going to do when it's all over? And they, uh, I know, I know their, their objective is to train the poor in some kind of marketable skill, like the bullshit uh, workforce program with unemployment well, and welfare. What, what good is that when those jobs are given to the H-1Bs? The H-1Bs are coming, are imported into the United States to take the very jobs that you were trained for ah. through the government program. Ah. Not counting the American jobs that were outsourced, we're talking about the H-1B visa now. So what do you, what are these programs going to do if there's no jobs available for not even a fraction of the unemployed and the poor? Because the H-1B people are working for much less than, than you are required to receive. Uh, um, uh, for your skill. Uh, um, I was going to say a living wage, but a, a, an adequate, the going rate for your skill, the H-1B visa immigrants are, get, are, are working less at the same job. It's all total camel dung. Complete camel dung. How are we doing on time? We got time for one more or what? I cannot believe all of the vitriol leveled against Donald Trump in many of the letters in this and other newspapers. Donald Trump, hey, get out of here. Get that protester out of here. I'll punch him in the face. Get him out of here. He is just showing common sense ah. regarding Muslim immigration to the United States. I don't think he's going far enough. There should be a moratorium on all immigration to the United States for 10 years. Well, there should be a, a really intensive background check, of course, to start on everyone. We take in about a million immigrants every year. Canada, Australia, take about 250,000. Each. Well, uh, Australia has a minimum wage of, I think, seven dollars, seventeen, seventeen dollars an hour, and Canada takes fairly good care of its people now that they have a real progressive uh, uh, president, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Trudeau. Those who, two countries are vastly underpopulated. Why should the United States? take in more immigrants every year than Canada and Australia. Uh, Think about that the next time someone on television calls the United States a xenophobic, racist country. Because the American companies want to, want to hire the immigrant and stiff them for less money. That's my take on it. It's all about greed and profit with the United States. Too bad Rabbi Shmuel Hertzfeld walked out. He missed a speech Truly. that had the 18,000 Strong American Israel Public Affairs Committee Convention on its feet in uproarious applause for its entire length. I watched Joe Biden, John Kasich, Ted Cruz, as well as Donald Trump. So they're supporting the, uh, the fascist right-wing Netanyahu? And no one excited the crowd nearly as much as Trump. And this is overwhelmingly positive. 
I hesitate to say that it seems to me that the rabbi is a bigot for not giving Trump a fair hearing. No doubt influenced by the poisonous vitriol in the media. Well, his daughter married a Jew, so did Chelsea Clinton. Including the editorial page of the record. And by Republicans who don't want an outsider to head their ticket in November. Yeah, they want to only a career politician, a career right-wing politician, not a businessman. Trump is a highly successful businessman, taking a one million dollar loan from his daddy, which he paid back with interest, and turning it into ten billion dollar business. His father took the money back? <laughs> well, motherfuckers. Uh, I don't know about that because when his father died, he left him two hundred million. Oh, his father was that wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Monuments to his success are evident all over the world. A man like this is what this country needs. Oh God. To save it from the ravages of Barack Obama. Oh, the ravages. Uh, uh, what about the fantastic record of Barack Obama when he inherited the Bush-Cheney, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word mess because it was worse. Uh, well, let's call it a mess. <laughs> depression. An unnamed depression. Because yeah. they called it a recession for two quarters, and then came the recovery. Did you get a recovery? I didn't get a recovery. No. But I'm sure the top 15, 20 percent did. I know damn well the top one percent did. So corrupt. This is somebody who knows how to negotiate. And when to walk away from a bad deal, whose stated objective is to level the playing field with America's trading partners and who will lower the corporate business tax and bring American business and offshore money back home, thereby creating jobs. <laughs> they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, bring the jobs back from being outsourced. They're not coming back. They're, they're, they're already paying uh, super low taxes or no taxes. <laughs> the Republican establishment is both shocked and frightened at the possible inevitability of Donald Trump as their nominee. That is very, very possible. Yet it is they who have created this possibility. Trump followers and much of the country are disgusted with the lack of action in Congress. Yet whose fault is that? Contrary to the <coughs> equivalence argument that the pundits often cite to blame both parties, only one party, the Republicans, promised in 2008 when President Obama was elected, that almost nothing of value would be accomplished during his presidency. They have kept their promise. Yeah, they, they're, 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 their objective was to uh, undermine everything that Barack Obama uh, uh, did. Yeah. And, 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 the uh, first statement was to make him a one-term president. Well, apparently uh, getting over 170 Five thousand uh, a, a year. They they were the high, probably the highest paid obstructors in the history of the United States, was because that's all they did. Um, you know, despite efforts by Democrats and the president to seek cooperation, 
and compromise on numerous issues such as immigration, college loan relief, infrastructure repair, and even aid to veterans. Republicans have blocked almost every proposal that could be benefit the American people. They have also treated Obama with as little respect as has ever been shown to a president. How did they expect those hurt by their actions to react? By simply saying, great! Great! Sound like Tony the Tiger. We appreciate a do-nothing Congress. Or by supporting a demagogue like Trump, who promises to break the system they have come to despise. The Republican Party created the Frankenstein monster known as Donald Trump. And now they are paying for it. Coming back to bite them in the ass. That's right. They have created the monster. And the monster is winning. <clears throat> the Republicans have sown the seeds of their own destruction. And of the countries as well if we are dumb enough to elect Trump. As president. Outstanding reading for the end of the show. I got another one here. All right, well, 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 I think. Okay. It wasn't a surprise to hear Republicans complain that President Obama should have flown home from Cuba after the Brussels bombings. However, they must have short memories of the flooding in New Orleans due to Hurricane Katrina. Then President George W. Bush was on the West Coast. And on, on his return to Washington, he could have landed in New Orleans because the airport was not affected, but instead he had Air Force One circle over the city while he simply looked out the window. Oh, nice guy. And he looked out the window and said, yeah, yeah, that's a disaster area. Yeah, that's a disaster. And then he continued home. Katrina was one of the worst disasters to happen in the United States, with 1,500 casualties. Obama was in another country when disaster struck in yet another country. Bush was in this country while a disaster struck in this country. So there is no comparison at all. Bush should have stopped in New Orleans, but he didn't. Funny, but I don't recall Republicans criticizing him then. <laughs> no. No. And of course his mother, Barbara Bush, who who said, uh, let them eat cake. No, it was similar. Uh, oh, those, see those, up. those poor people sleeping on the, on, the, on the field of the New Orleans Superdome, they should be lucky that they're there. It's a step up for them to sleep in the Superdome. Right. She probably said that as she was eating uh, filet mignon and rock lobster tail for mm. dinner. And Dungeness crab. Yeah, drinking fine wine. Yeah, and eating uh, Alaskan king crab or something, <laughs> uh, or beluga caviar. You know, yeah, they they should appreciate sleeping on on a football field. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's it. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us for progressive discussions. We'll see you next time. If there is a next. If there is a next time during the end times. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.